Hi everyone. What a strange and concerning time we're living in at the moment. Most of you will know that we've been self-isolating over the last week. We've got another week to go. And it's looking like over the coming weeks and months that it's going to be the same experience for lots of us. We're going to be on our own, with a close family. But we're not going to see much of each other. So we might... Uh, we thought uh, as a ministry team at St. John's that it might be helpful to have a, a short daily devotion to encourage us. Uh, so for the time being at least, we're going to try and record these and put them out uh, during the week. And with all this self-isolation and social distancing, uh, I felt the pressure that I should be you know, taking the opportunity to spend more time with God. Which of course isn't a bad thing, a bad ambition. But then, rather than just thinking about the quantity of time with God, I thought it would be helpful to consider instead uh, the shape of the relationship that we have with God. And so I thought what we could do for this week is spend some time considering, uh, little by little, the Lord's Prayer. We're going to read that in a moment from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. But because we say it every week in church, perhaps every day at home, it's very easy for us to glaze over the significance of those words as we pray. So I hope that by focusing on it piece by piece, it will be really refreshing for us, rather than feeling guilty and thinking, oh, I should be praying more during this time. Let's start instead by allowing the Lord's Prayer to shape our time with God. As so I'm going to read it for us now, uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. Uh, Jesus said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And today we'll just focus on that first line. And the first thing Jesus teaches us here is not to do with what we should ask, or uh, what our posture should be like. Now the first thing is all about how the person following Jesus, trusting in him, should relate to God. Now, there's many titles on there that we could legitimately use when approaching God in prayer. A holy One, a God Almighty, Creator, Lord, but how does Jesus call us to address God? He says, our Father. Christians are people united to Jesus through faith. And that means his Father becomes our Father. Uh, we're children of God, not only in the sense that he created us, but in the sense that he adopted us. Through faith in Christ, we're brought into the family of love that is the Trinity, with the spirit of adoption within us. Uh, we have the Son of God, Jesus, not only as our Saviour, but as our brother, and God as our Father. And this has huge ramifications for our prayer life. Uh, we, we don't come to God groveling. We don't come to him in fear. We come as dearly loved children approaching their father comfortable in his love. Now for some of us, a fatherhood is a difficult notion. Uh, that could be for many different reasons and experiences. We may have very negative thoughts about our own fathers. Or perhaps we feel like we haven't really ever had a father. But rather than talk our experience of fatherhood, uh, take uh, our experience of fatherhood and measure God against that, we need instead to consider God's 
perfect, loving fatherhood as our starting point. In fact, later on in Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 to 11, Jesus shows us that God's fatherhood is on a different level to our human experiences of fatherhood. I'm going to read from that. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse, I'll read from verse 7 to verse 11. Jesus says, Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. At which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Generally speaking, in the case of broken, sinful human fathers, when their child comes asking for bread, he won't give them a stone. A human fathers know how to give good gifts to their children. Now, again, I know that isn't always the case with human fathers. Sometimes they know how to give good gifts, but don't, or can't, or won't. But Jesus' point isn't to make us think about our human fathers. Instead, he wants us to see just how much better, how much more loving and caring is God's fatherhood. How much more, Jesus says, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So as we pray, we approach our loving Heavenly Father, who loves to give good gifts to his children. Now I think very often we approach God like we've got to persuade him to get on our side, like we have to win him over before he'll listen properly or before he'll answer our prayers. Sometimes I'm guilty of making my children treat me in this sort of way. In the interest of uh, good manners, uh, when they ask, Daddy, I want some more milk, I'll stop them and say, how do you ask nicely? But often that just ends up with, Daddy, I want some more milk, please. Whereas what I'm aiming for is, Daddy, please may I have some more milk. In our minds, we have a checklist of how, of how uh, children should correctly ask for things. And often we think that that is the same for God. As if to ask him for something that is on our heart, we have to ask correctly or persuade him with our words or our actions. But that's not true for the Christian. Adopted into his family. God is our loving Heavenly Father, and He loves to give good gifts to His children. Now, I don't know uh, what today has in store for you, how much isolation you will be experiencing, and what your needs and concerns will be. I don't know how much time you will give over to talking to your Heavenly Father. But rather than simply thinking, I should do more, praying. Why not spend some time allowing your relationship with your Heavenly Father to shape your prayers? And like a child comes confidently to their parents with a need or a worry or a request. Remember as you come before God today that in Christ Jesus he is your Heavenly Father. As your Father he loves to hear you speak to him. As your Father, he loves to forgive you. As your Father, he loves to listen to your requests. As your Father, he loves to give good gifts to his child. Now, if you happen to be watching this and you're, well, you're not sure what it means to have God as your Father, or you wouldn't say that you've trusted in his Son, Jesus Christ, or you have questions about what it means to be a Christian, 
then can I point you to one of the other playlists on the St. John's Church YouTube channel? Uh, it's called Essentials and it's a series of short videos that you can watch in your own time. They lay out the good news of Christianity nice and clearly. So however you spend your day today, uh, please do spend some time with your Father in Heaven who loves his children to come to him. Let's take a moment to pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we pray that today we would come to you confidently as your children, readily to enjoy being in your presence, knowing that you love to listen to us, to hear us, to answer us, to give us the good gifts that you have in store. Father, would you shape our prayer life with you uh, through the words of your Son in the Lord's Prayer? And we ask this uh, in his name. Amen. Well, I do hope that you can join us for another uh, devotion uh, update tomorrow as well.